You're saying that these mass shootings are some kind of government conspiracy to control us. The internet is so censored. Saying that they're going around shooting up schools to advance gun control. That is an insult to people that have lost children. The CIA coined the term conspiracy theory for people who, like me, think outside of the box. The word conspiracy means to conspire or to go against. So they are saying that we are thinking of theories to go against the government. I don't consider myself a conspiracy theorist. I consider myself a theorist. Mass shootings are what the government calls false flags. It's something to push a narrative or an agenda. One of the casualty events that really struck a chord with me was the Aurora, Colorado Batman movie shooting. I don't think he acted alone because I don't think he did it. There are multiple gas masks leading away from the movie theater in the parking lot. There are witnesses stating they saw people running out towards the area where the gas masks were found. And then the shooter himself is found in his car so incapacitated that he can't even stand up and walk to the cop car. For Columbine, several students said that people came in normal clothing and just started shooting after Dylan and Eric had already gone through everything. There are people who ran for cover at hotels for the Las Vegas shooting who said there were people walking down the streets, going into hotels, trying to shoot at people further. Victims and eyewitnesses tend not to lie about things like that. It is a traumatic moment, and you're going to remember every second of that. You think these mass shootings are inside jobs? Yes. False flag? Yes. What do you think about um, the concept of Occam's razor or the principle of parsimony? I'm not familiar with them. It is the scientific principle that says the simplest explanation is typically correct. It's like you, you say you can see a light in the sky and you can say, well, you know, that could be a UFO or it could be a star or it could be just a natural phenomenon or it could be aliens invading the earth, which is the most likely explanation. And Occam's razor, the principle of parsimony, is the simplest explanation of phenomenon is often the best one. And you're saying that these mass shootings are some kind of government conspiracy to control us and make us dependent on the government by giving up our guns so they can control us completely, correct? That's correct, yes. How likely is that? As opposed to someone being deranged and doing something based on that deranged thinking. Oh, don't get me wrong, there are people out there that are deranged and do awful things at their own volition. It just gets to a point where the government has lied several times about incidents to cover things up. And so when they're plastering on the, it on the TV for days and days and days, why? Why do we need to see this awful stuff for, for days and weeks on end? It just... It makes you wonder, they have proven through declassified documents that they do awful events and they cover it up so that we don't know. I wish I knew why they, would, why they do it, but. Well, that's a big leap to saying that they're going around shooting up schools and, and killing children to advance gun control. And the reason I'm focusing on that is because that is an insult to people that have lost children. It's an insult to people that have suffered the pain of all of this to muddy the waters by saying their own government is in there shooting their children. I think that is an absurd assertion for which you have absolutely no evidence whatsoever but yet we ask you, show us your evidence for that. You say, well, Google it. That uh, was actually not my answer. I couldn't provide my sources because the internet is so censored that everything that existed has been gone. 
Well, I'm actually summarizing your answer because there are some things you said you didn't want to talk about because you didn't want to open yourself up to being sued. Correct. So don't criticize me for oh, summarizing no, no. your answer because you asked me not to be specific. No, there are a lot so of things. If you things. want to get specific, I can get damn specific. And I don't mean any sort of disrespect to victims because they are victims. I think it is absolutely disgusting that the government would do things to our own citizens of this country like that. And that's why I say what I say. MK Ultra stands for Mind Control Ultra. And it was a program that the CIA started in the early 60s as experiments to mess with brainwaves to see if they could manipulate us into doing things. I think that the government does this to not let us know that we truly have the power. If we had to go against the government, we would take control. Well, tonight we're pulling back the curtain on conspiracy theories. 50% of Americans believe in at least one of them. 50% of Americans. What do you think happened to the brain? I think it went missing because it could prove that there was more than one shooter. You think somebody has it? Mm, I think they probably destroyed it. You don't think any or most of the high profile shootings have been reported straight? No. You think the Las Vegas shooting was not reported straight? You think the Aurora shooting was not reported straight? The JFK shooting, the Columbine shooting, you think they were all distorted in the way they were reported? Correct. Yes. Despite the fact that there were extensive investigations that confirm what's been reported? Yes, and there's still a lot of declassified information that we don't know yet either. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of information we do know. Yes. And, but you discount that. I don't discount it, but I ask questions and I look at where the pieces don't fit for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, James says he believes that Diddy and Jeffrey Epstein have a lot in common. What are some of the parallels that you're talking about with Diddy and Epstein? Yeah, so recently his ex-producer, uh, Rodney Jones, detailed in, a, in a, about an 87-page uh, lawsuit that Diddy was, you know, drugging people, lacing uh, drinks with drugs, um, sex trafficking, hiring prostitutes, and he says he witnessed them commit a murder. He also alleges that there's cameras throughout all of Diddy's homes and properties, and that he has film of uh, athletes, politicians, and artists, and um, it's a lot of parallels there between it. If he changes his name again, it's probably going to be Lil Epstein. Do you think there was a connection between the two? I haven't seen any evidence of that. I think he was just doing it for personal power and gain. Mm -hmm. But uh, if he ends up killing himself, you know, or overdoses anytime soon, maybe that would even draw more similarities. What do you do with this information? I typically post on, on my Facebook, you know, I ask people to convince me I'm wrong. And sometimes they change my mind and sometimes they don't. Uh -huh. And does Facebook allow it to stay up? Do they ever take it down? I've had friends say they can't find certain posts, but mm -hmm. I don't experience it myself. Yeah. Have you had things taken down? Yes, I have had things taken down. Have you down. had things taken down? Absolutely. How many people here in the studio audience have put things up on social media and had them taken down? Stand up if you've had stuff taken down. Okay, so it was something content-wise that they took that, right? Very interesting. We're always looking for evidence to prove ourselves, to prove ourselves right. It all started in 2001, when a guy in a bar asked Perez if he'd heard of Jones and his Infowars site. Before long, Perez was lost in the world of the Illuminati, satanic pedophiles, and the New World Order. At the time, I had a lot of depression, a lot of um, real anxious thoughts, and the idea that the, uh, there was some kind of evil force on the outside helped to explain why I was so miserable all the time. He says conspiracy theories fill the need. I wanted to be that person that had that, like that um, knowledge coming down the hill saying, you guys, I have this secret knowledge that can help everybody. Today, Perez is what you might call a recovering conspiracy addict, and he's trying to help others kick the habit. Well, Antonio says he was suicidal over a girl when he first got into 
this conspiracy world and kind of got pulled into it. You say this helped your depression, essentially. Is it, was it just a distraction? Yeah, at the time, um, I'd been depressed most of my life, had a lot of, um, I guess, tra uh, childhood trauma. And it, these conspiracy theories, that helped me to think it was things on the outside, like it was the Illuminati. That's why the world is a miserable place. It wasn't what I was doing from the inside. Okay, so you, you found somebody to blame it on. Yeah. When you started pulling back from that and owning it and dealing with it, did it get better? Yes, and it, even up until a few months ago, I um, I had like one, maybe 1% 1 that still believe in 9-11 was an inside job, which I actually had dealt with a, had a therapist that helped me to get rid of that last little bit. It was, um, it didn't happen overnight. It was a kind of a gradual process. Mm -hmm. You know, the number one need among all people is acceptance. Our number one fear is rejection. I see people sometimes in these conspiracy theorist groups that they find bonding, they find acceptance. If you have people that think the way they do, and so they start talking to each other and they find a sense of, of kinship among people that share their thoughts. Did that happen with you? 100%. And um, when I found the online community, it fed into the confirmation bias. So that's when I became, it was almost like a pyramid scheme. I got pulled into it and I wanted to pull other people into it mm -hmm. to, to wake people up, I guess. And we could all be one miserable mess together. Yeah. You know, it's interesting how much that is true in society right now how much people live in bubbles. Maybe the conspiracies don't sound as strange when you talk about them out loud as saying, you know, the moon landing never happened or whatever. That may sound pretty far out for some people, but right now we do have a nation that's living in bubbles. And it's like, hey, come over and get in our yeah. bubble here. We'll tell each other what we think and we'll all think the same way, and we belong to something. And we don't want to hear what somebody else thinks, which creates division and kind of an inbred thinking. But that's really true in conspiracy theory groups, right? Oh, yeah. And what if somebody starts to question the theory? Somebody starts to push back and go, hey, you know, come on, this is getting a little weird. At least for me, a lot of conspiracy theorists will call people sheep. So I almost put up a mental block, and I just thought like, oh, they don't want to know. But if somebody pushed back on me, I would go back and I would do more research, I would watch more videos just to reinforce my beliefs and keep, and keep that feeling of safety, safety and acceptance. Yeah. You know, the most dangerous lie is that which has a kernel of truth. And, you know, in everything that everybody's talked about here, there's a kernel of truth in some of everything. I mean, the government does do bad things. They do cover-ups. There are things that maybe it's 10 years later, 20 years later, it is found out that they weren't telling the truth about something. And so you go, well, there you go.